Hi, everyone. I'm Don Krebs, and I'm a uh, survivor um, of sexual abuse at the age of six. Um, and I brought myself with me. Um, there's a little bit of a glare there, but um, if I zoom in close enough, you can almost see the broken soul in my eyes there. It's very telling. So that was about the closest picture I had of that. Um, but I'm also uh, a counselor, so I work in mental health as well. I'm a licensed professional counselor in Pennsylvania, and um, I focus on helping trauma survivors. Um, and I share with them that it's not just a book that I read, that I lived it. Um, so you'll see the teal. I wear that year round, not just this month. <laughs> but um, yeah, and I, I'm uh, a writer. So I have my book, which also contains poetry. Um, and I'll be reading from the chat book that comes with it um, to share some of those poems. Uh, as well, I have an anthology I got to be part of, uh, Things We Haven't Said. Uh, I don't make any money from that. This is my tithe. Uh, we donate all the proceeds to rain.org for Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network and the Voices and Faces Project. Uh, we were very blessed. We got two starred reviews for that anthology uh, from Booklist and Kirkus, and I'll be reading from that. So thank you. All right. Um, I read a few other poems last time and Mike shared my recording. So I've switched and picked a few different ones this time. This first one is called Waking. I realize I've been sleeping. I bolt up, breathe like bellows. In that breath, my lungs rattle, weigh me down to the floor. It's all right. I kneel beneath the table, knuckled, aware of heat and tears. My breath emerges. Perhaps my bones turn to wood. In these moments, I knock against glass and rupture. What do I see when I fear my reflection? It is difficult to feel others outside. I am ashamed of tears. I will not speak the words swelled against my skull. I break glass. I gather my words or blink them back. I share these surges with others. Inside. Do you hear me? Don't realize my eyes have opened. The Fall of Man. An empty room of an old farmhouse down the hall began to turn in on itself. A clogged drain, desperate to break free, a chugging spiral downward. A dance, really, darkened, elongated movement. His naked haste to call the boy here. There were words, certainly, but lost in screaming silence. Of the reeling moment, ragdoll thrown on the ground. Taking it in, the boy sputters and coughs, like on a cigarette toked too early. He wants to vomit. Instead, he gags and spits phlegm, fluid, mucus on the floor. The boy staggers, lurches, darts from the room, the isolated farmhouse, the surrounding fields. Bright sun stabs into his eyes what he has seen tasted, felt. 
The screen door slaps the door frame, shuddering. Humid haze presses the clouds down. He feels a shortness of breath. Then nothing. Numbness. A swallowing of the pill. A serpent's bitter fruit. Above the well. Most days I wander thick fields, watching sharp movements of the pine. I cross the fence through waist deep grass, keep pace under boughs, still wet with rain. When the storm hits, cold stones below my feet smell like wind stirring the water. What pinches the switch of my soul? Such marks feed heat like hot scraps of desperation raging the storm. The branch comes crashing down, tangles itself in the fence. My hands hurry to build an earthen ladder from the remains. Wrestle God against the open spaces. Throw down language from a new babel. A dry thirst pulls up from the well an ocean, a puzzle with missing pieces and questions we've never been brave enough to regret. The earth grips cracks near the well, in deep rock where mud salves my eyes. I climb an inner rope to sight, yet here I am clinging to the earth. What do I hope for in the depth of the well? Sometimes the ocean stands from its stone valley, stretches, curves up over breakers, where I now crouch, watching seaweed curl, spread out like needles around a fire. Here, small crabs, angry and clambering, stomp back beneath the rocks, away from light and eyes. And this last one is also the title to the chat book, um, Fish Out of Water. You have made men like fish in the sea. The wicked foes pulls all of them up with hooks. Habakkuk 1, 14 and 15. In sleep, I fear water's weight, press down, drowns me each time the air seeps out, stunning the stab of throat, accustomed to lightness of air, darkness of water, down dreams womb, panic to plunge back, shock of air, rebirth, exquisite death of consciousness, knowing darkness, myself, a harbored shadow thrown against the wall. What remains in shade but the drowning truth of light? Hardened hands in earth at 5 a.m. Route out the fatted meat. Dirt passed through flesh. Worms in black soil. Softened by deliberate work. Take in filth. Attain purity. Their bodies baited, opened, cast into dark waters. Air leans in, cuts through current, another dying. He clutches the stringer, stripping basket, dressed to receive the feast. What is fishing to me now? The practice of his hands thread pieces of me on hooks, thrusts beneath the surface of the water. The clustered claustrophobia presses in, tightens, Clench of teeth, tensing up, rigid rigor mortis, tiny death in wakefulness. His sweat, an urgent haste, skin thrusts to satisfy, gratified, I die. Laden, laid in grave's clothes, I pass from stringer's chain to stripping basket. Casket stokes the choke of light, weight of sight. My unlived life 
a fathomless dream, seemed by the death I live with him, worn revelation of shame mourned, torn in water, reborn. So that's from my survivor story that just came out this month in the US and the UK. And I'm so happy that I got my voice back. <laughs> um, and this is a poem called Pinball. That's in Things We Haven't Said. Um, and I'll, I can explain the meaning if you would like. Pull back and bang, this round arcs. Hammers, mind against bumpers. Baling, da ding, ding, ding. Flashes of flesh, movement ripping its way through. Havoc of thoughts too dark to speak. Playing with yourself again, I see. Questions bring up a flood of shame. Staccato reply to shrug it off. Everything is fine in you. I deflect shiny metal balls as they ricochet. Blades across my insides where bleeding hides, staunched by long buried shards, images of everything he did to me. What was taken rises from deep places, vile divots, drops target, and I'm back there again when it happened. For whip the ding ding, Flipper bats scrambling to contain every ball careening down the lanes. Hands on my hip, his mouth whispers near my ear, I'm up next. Now it's on overdrive. Balls fire from all sides. Ba ding ding, one slingshots. Da ding, another through the spinner. The squish of sweat, his haste, panic trips. Roll over switches, bada bada ding, coming in fast, each flash fires across lamps in the lane with no apron to stop as he grinds himself against me. Let's play another round. Thank you. Sorry, I'm a little taken up. <laughs> I'm a little full. Um, yeah. would you take a moment, actually, I've heard you read that poem before, um, live on stage at the, at the Rotunda. Um, yes. Could you talk a little bit about what it's about? Certainly. Yeah. Um, for me, this poem captures what it's like for a sexual abuse survivor to relive the trauma, uh, to experience the flashback uh, or an unwanted memory. Um, because like what has been said earlier, um, we talked about the concept that trauma doesn't live in the brain, it lives in the body. And it feels sort of like a pinball game banging around inside of us. Um, our senses can trigger it, uh, so we can see something or hear something. We could have a touch memory, um, a smell. Um, I definitely have smell and touch memories that trigger um, and one of the worst was, uh, we have four boys and, um, my youngest son is very like touchy feely, you know, great kid and all, and he didn't mean anything by it, but I couldn't help when he would just like climb in my space and touch places on me, particularly on my legs. Um, that would be that triggering feeling. Um, so I wanted to capture that in a poem to sort of give um, survivors voice to be able to say, yeah, that's what it's like. That's how it, that's how it is for me. And then we need to listen to the messengers inside of our bodies and learn um, what those messages are and to understand that they're not the bad guy. They're trying to help us. Exactly. You know, I never thought of it that way, but yeah, they're they are trying to help us. Um, I 
having heard that poem, I did feel like it was a bunch of flashbacks and odd, odd events against each other. It was the way we remember. So, but I wouldn't, I didn't have enough confidence to say that I thought it was that. Um, forgive me if I stutter at times, I still have the illness and hopefully it will go away soon. Um, Jojo had a question for you. Yes, um, thank you. Oh, I was wondering, um, Donald, and this goes for everybody else who wants to share, are there links to like to read your work? Um, you're asking for where you can read the work? Oh, um, yeah, so uh, things we haven't said is pretty much everywhere you can get a book. Um, the Packing House, um, it's also out in the US and the UK and it's, um, it's also pretty much everywhere. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all the different bookshops. Um, so, um, and if you do get the book, let me know, um, email me gdcribs at gmail.com, send me your address info and I'll send you one of these and some signed stuff. Great. You Sorry, are- my, my memory's not great, so I'm gonna need to write it down. Um, sure. If it's okay. Could you repeat your email? Sure, it's gdcribs, C-R-I-B-B-S. That's just Latin for curly hair. <laughs> Although I, I'm kind of like <laughs> slamming it down right now, but when it gets bigger, it, it gets kind of curly. I have to put product in to keep it from getting like chia head. <laughs> <laughs> for anyone who needs context with anybody else here, um, feel free to email me at askasurvivor at gmail.com. And if the, both parties want it, I will put you together, you know? So, you know, anybody who's curious about somebody's work or is thinking of collaborating or is doing a particular project that they think they'd be good for, I think that kind of interconnectivity is very important to us as a community. Um, I would like to ask you one last question. Um, there's been talk about this. When did you start, Donald, when did you start writing? Um, what led to you being as prolific as you now are? When did that happen for you? Um, I didn't find my voice until about high school. Uh, and I had a teacher who believed in me, an English teacher, and I wrote the most God awful poems. <laughs> uh, and they, you know, real forced rhyme. Uh, let me see. Those nocturnal live great lives, the hawk spots prey and then it dives. Distant hues mix black and gray to create the morning a bright day. You know, it was like super cheese fest. <laughs> but uh, he he heard something there and he he said, keep writing. And, and I kept coming. And then he said, you know, you, you don't have to make it rhyme for it to be right. Right, exactly. And I said, what? <laughs> he said, there's these other poetry devices, you know, illusion, alliteration. We can try, we can do all these other things too. Enjambment, if you heard the, the ripping mm. word that was split in the middle. Yeah. Um, you did a lot of that also with the pinball poem yeah. was wonderful. Right. Um, the, what was that, onomatopoeia? Um, so he, he told me to explore those other things <laughs> and do that instead of making it rhyme. 